I'm Ashton Addison from EventChain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. Today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Chris Daw, the founder and CEO of Effect AI. Chris, welcome to the show and thanks for being here. Ashton, man, thank you very much for, for having me on the show. I'm very excited to join you today. I'm very excited as well. And this is such an interesting topic, uh, AI. I, if we could just kick off the interview by explaining what is Effect AI, how have you combined automation, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and all these other amazing things that you're working on, and then we'll dive right in. Yeah, cool, man. That's a, the f a fantastic question and incredibly relevant to our, our project. Um, obviously, these are some pretty significant buzzwords in technology, but um, with buzzwords in technology, there's always room for marriages in these technologies. And how we use cryptocurrencies and blockchain to kind of marry the, the artificial intelligence world is obviously there's two branches of artificial intelligence. One is um, uh, computer vision. So this is teaching computers how to, to see like a human. And then you have natural language processing, which is more about teaching a computer how to understand languages. The blockchain creates this uh, open and inclusive environment to connect to basically anybody in the world. So if we build a platform where language data um, can be structured and can be worked on by anybody in the world, um, that's a pretty powerful thing. And that's how we use blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So we tap into people to help structure language data and computer vision data, labeling these images in different languages uh, for clients all over the world. And we pay them in cryptocurrency. So it doesn't matter about the banking system. It doesn't matter about any geopolitical problems. If you have a Wi-Fi connection, it doesn't matter what the skin color is, your religion or where you're from. If you have something to add to our data sets that our customers need, then you can jump on board and you can earn um, you can earn value, you can earn cryptocurrencies in real time. So instead of waiting for the mm. banking system to get you your funds across seas um, or, or, or uh, you know, these, these different legacy uh, ways of the financial systems, we, we pay our workforce uh, in real time. So that's how we connect the blockchain and our platform, our AI data structuring platform. So yeah, pretty, it's vital for what we do. Mm -hmm. And there's no company in the world right now that has access to more talent than we do because of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very cool, Chris. And I, I want to dive into the AI part, but I also I just want to start with a little bit more on the blockchain because, as you said, you can have that instant uh, settlement. You can have people that are actually rewarded for the contributions that they make, and you can prove that they've made them. Uh, but there's also this decentralized network part where you can get more people connected, and you don't really have to have that hierarchy layers to go through. It's easier to tap into that information. So if you could just elaborate a little bit more on how does the decentralized network work and as well the blockchain technology I was researching that you've been using the EOS blockchain platform. If you could explain maybe the rationale behind that and how it really benefits the AI platform, uh, we could dive into that. Yeah, certainly. So we'll, we'll start with the, the latter question with the EOS blockchain. Um, our, our project and our company is completely blockchain agnostic. We don't give a damn about each and every single ecosystem. And uh, the only thing that matters to us is a technology that works for what we're mm -hmm. actually doing. That, that's what uh, means the most. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm the biggest fan of this space. And personally, aside from the company, I'm a, a huge Ethereum head. I, I love Decentraland. I love engaging in that whole ecosystem. But we started our project on uh, the NEO blockchain, the mm -hmm. Chinese oh. Ethereum. Um, and we migrated over to EOS because NEO is completely broken, doesn't work, and mm -hmm. uh, probably never will, whatever. Um, but EOS, the blockchain behind EOS has free transactions, mm -hmm. fast transactions, and that's what we need. We're doing hundreds of thousands of data annotations uh, per day in some cases. And to think about like the gas fees, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, five gas fees is too expensive for, for our network to be running, you know. Um, so we can do hundreds of thousands of uh, transactions on EOS. It's fast, it's scalable, it works perfectly for us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why and how we use the EOS blockchain. But of course, uh, we're open to all kinds of suggestions, technology first for our clients, for our workforce and for our project. Um, and the decentralized part, obviously, decentralized systems, you, you take uh, the, the Bitcoin protocol as an example of just a beautiful, beautiful decentralized system that works from the beginning to the end. It's just a, the, the most beautiful thing. And to emulate that, to add key elements like data structuring, a platform where people work, a distributed workforce of people, um, it becomes very complex. So to create and 
like build forward to decentralized systems. Mm -hmm. We're taking it in baby steps and all projects should do the same. If you want to mm -hmm. hard code and code as law, uh, decentralized systems, uh, that's a good way to break things and, and, uh, um, so what we believe in just these little steps, we have a distributed, uh -huh. decentralized community of people that work on our platform. And coming up at the end of this month, we will have a fully functioning DAO. So a decentralized uh -huh. autonomous organization, which is one of the most fun components ever and what is where projects should be leading their project if they don't have that already, where contributors, community members can join your initiative with your pools of tokens that you have there to write proposals and build in these things. So that's our next big step to decentralization. Uh, it's the most fun step we have ever taken. We've gotten a lot of traction on that uh, uh, on that initiative that, that we're launching at the end of this month. And it's been a long process to put all of these technical aspects into a DAO is incredibly uh, difficult, but also a lot of fun. And we're flexible with it. With the DAO, we're also releasing this in stages of, mm -hmm. of decentralization and, and voting will come into play and, and all kinds of different participation from our community and, and people abroad. So um, yeah, baby steps to get there. And uh, we won't sacrifice quality and we will not jeopardize the project in the face of decentralization, but the ultimate vision, the ultimate goal is a fully decentralized uh, network for artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. I love it, Chris. That's amazing. And I think that you went about it the right way. And I did a similar uh, thing with my project where we were using Ethereum and it was lacking that scalability. And the co-founders were saying, we really have to be business maximalists. You can't be blockchain maximalists and you pigeonhole yourself into a technology that may be obsolete uh, in you know a short amount of time and, and who really knows and to be able to pivot so to move from neo to eos and to also have that foresight that hey uh, there could be other blockchains that are more interoperable and work better for the business aspect of it in the future and if that's what it takes to keep the business going uh, and and to work better then it's the right decision to make um, so it's interesting that I, i'm glad to hear that eos is working well for the project uh, and that you're willing to switch technologies to whatever works best to solve the problem. So I really like that. And, and the DAO sounds really interesting as well. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see that being rolled out. And I've been following the industry since the DAO happened uh, back in Ethereum. And let's hope that there's no little mishaps um, like that that happened. But I'm, I'm really interested to hear um, how that plays out. And the fact that anybody in the community can really just go in and start contributing I just want to dive into that a little bit. There's all these different types of data. Um, and are there any requirements for people that come in to, that want to join this decentralized network, input types of data, or help build out the network? And is there anything specific that you're looking for first? Or are there any requirements for that? So it, it's such an incredibly wonderful space. And, and uh, moving forward, like you said, with pivoting and, and changing and adapting to the space, we're adapting to the artificial intelligence space, the crypto space, the blockchain space, the whole technology space, where the internet is going, uh, where politics is going. Um, and, and so when it comes to the DAO, I've, I've now participated in several DAOs and I'm working in all kinds of different places and learning how the voting works and how that's connected okay. to the blockchain and how you make a proposal. People will stake some some reputation on, on your proposals, which can pay that out. Um, so with the DAO, we're really and if anybody wants to learn about what we're doing with the DAO, we've had blog posts over the last few months that my my team and myself have been writing just to, to let you know the different stages that are coming up. But um, so this opens up all the possibilities. We're a fairly small team. We got about seven people. Um, and we have a backlog of about 7,000 things that we want to build into this network. So this creates a perfect opportunity for people that are following our, our project or DAO uh, contributors. Because mm -hmm. I've learned that people that add value to a DAO don't just add it to one DAO. They add it to all kinds of DAOs. So as we open this up, we've attracted so many developers, so many creative minds uh, to come in and say, we're ready. We want to do pre-proposals to, to offer our services in marketing, sales, business development, uh, programming, uh, you know, design, everything. It's, it's blowing my mind how fast this is taking off. But when it comes to the workforce on our platform, it's a very good question because we've had workers from the beginning and uh, that, that's uh, about three years ago when we launched the platform Effect Force. 
And uh, we started off with about 4,000 members, and these were mostly crypto people, people that participated in our token sale, that were in our ecosystem, in our community. But as we drew further ahead, we built this protocol where we can build services in different kind of automation pipelines with humans and algorithms in kind of working in tandem, you know, kind of on a conveyor belt. You know, humans are validating work, algorithms are working to structure some stuff, humans are revalidating, and it goes along. So, um, We've built a new platform called Effect Translate, and Effect Translate is working specifically with language tasks. We really feature about 12 different languages, and um, you can you can probably imagine that when we reach out to find uh, like professional translators, these aren't your typical crypto people. They, they're absolutely the farthest away that you can think of. You're looking at middle-aged people, sometimes older people, um, that, that have taken on these tasks on the computer to translate. And we onboard them, teach them about our platform, teach them about cryptocurrencies very quickly. But we have a very easy onboarding um, task. And when you come onto the platform, so the, the question was, like, how, how do you vet who these people are and, and qualify that they're worthy uh, of doing the tasks that they say they are? We have a crazy validation system where people have to do some qualifying tasks. They have to stake a little bit of uh, crypto to make sure that they're doing the correct work and not spamming the network. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of qualifiers, there's a lot of algorithms watching the work that's being done, a lot of scripts that are checking. Uh, and then we have human validators that are validating the work. So subsets of everybody's work is being done by a special workforce of validators going, yeah, they're doing the work correctly. They can give these workers feedback if they don't feel that they're doing them correctly. And we call them master workers. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a big validation system there and a qualification system in a gamified platform where people can start to level up and, and really understand the value of creating good quality work on our platform for our clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how that progresses as the network becomes more decentralized. And, and you talked about staking the tokens, and you mentioned that you've had some of these community members for all, already three years from when the token sale was. And I don't want to pass up the opportunity to talk about the effect EFX token. If you could elaborate, because I know there's all these other governance functions, and when you have a DAO, you really need that uh, those tokens to act as governance, contribution, and all these different things. Can you just sort of lay out a, 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 a little look of what does it look like in how the token works within the ecosystem and how people need to use it, but also how they can be rewarded in it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So obviously, you, you think about a token attached to a project, and there's not too much justification for a lot of them. And I'll be honest, when we started, it was hard to explain other than we needed to raise funds for this, so we're, we're giving that token in exchange. But the EFX token is truly a utility token. To use the platform as a requester, like Kraft Heinz, we work with Kraft Heinz, the United Nations, the government of Singapore, we got all of the big hitters paying tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to us to structure their data. Um, that EFX is the lifeblood of the entire network. They cannot get one data annotation at all with any other method other than putting in the EFX token into the system. And that's the system that pays the workers for what they do. Obviously, it's a volatile token like all cryptocurrencies, but our workforce understands that they can convert that quickly to a stable coin to protect their earnings. Because a lot of the workers on our workforce, they're not uh, crypto people, they're not uh, first world people. Uh, a massive majority of them are in developing countries. So mm -hmm. they're not in it for the cryptocurrency gains, although they see them and they're educating themselves on the potential of investments in this space. But their primary goal is to buy, you know, milk, cheese, eggs, bread at the end of the day. So uh, we create these systems for them to be able to do that. But uh, that's the, the, the lifeblood of the whole network. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously you can take that token and you can stake it. What we did is we separated the utility token from the governance token. So we had people stake the token to uh, uh, produce governance tokens. We recently stopped the production of those tokens. Uh, we have actually over 61% of our entire supply, circulating supply staked. So that's just a, an element of the commitment of the community that's behind this, the secret project called Effect.ai will be world, worldly known uh, soon enough. Um, but yeah, that governance token is now what we call kind of the brains. We have the beating heart and the blood 
uh, with the EFX. That's what you need to make this system work. The velocity of this token going back and forth from clients to the workforce to structure the data. And then now we have this, this NFX, uh, this, this governance token, which is really the brains behind where this whole network goes and is driven by votes in the community that's building these things out, which will create more value for both. The more that's being used in the system by requesters, by actual clients paying cash to buy these tokens in the system, uh, the, the more, you know, the, the more scarcity that there is there and the more usability and the more speculators will come into the, to, to the, the category as well. Mm -hmm. But then we have that governance token and the governance token in the DAO allows people to gain access to the um, success of the network. 10% of everything that goes through our platform goes back into the DAO to the people that have staked EFX and NFX to be a DAO member, a guardian as we mm -hmm. call it. Um, so that's where there, and it's unlimited upside. If we do 10 million in revenue next year, which is, an, is not impossible, 10% uh, of all of that stuff goes to the DAO members and, and they know the value of that. And we've even had a smart contract stack in our staking protocol which creates stake age. So the longer you stake, the, the more exponential growth in the weight of your EFX. So it's not actually just about how much EFX you have, but the time that you've actually staked it. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting thing for all the technology fans out there and the smart contract builders to check out what we've actually produced there. Yeah, that's super interesting. And it sounds like you've you found the perfect utility to help grow the network in uh, you know, a community-based way. And you know we're running out of time, Chris, but I do want to talk about, lastly, the future, how you're continuing to grow. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you're always looking for new community members and clients to help join the network. Um, are you looking for anything specific? How can people learn more and get involved and start contributing and getting rewarded as well? Yeah, listen, we're always looking for great workers uh, to join the platform and in the various ways that we work. At the end of the year, we have something very, very special. We're getting into a new space in the crypto space, um, but I'm not going to elaborate on that. But the protocol that we've built allows anybody to build a product or a service, uh, service on our network. So tapping into the human intelligence and the algorithms that are in our network. So just an interface, right? So you can call it whatever you want. ABC data structuring for this specific niche thing. Um, people don't get that yet and that's totally fine. So what we've decided to do is build products and services on, on top of the Effect Network. Um, and one of the, our latest ones is called Effect Translate, like I mentioned before, where we do, um, we do translations for all kinds of different uh, clients and, and uh, people across the globe. But now we're focusing in on our famous, favorite industry and that's the cryptocurrency and blockchain industry. So if you are a crypto project that wants to translate your stuff and the value of translating your stuff is incredible. The data shows that translating your stuff creates multilingual search engine optimization to get you seen in all of these different demographics. So the Chinese market is huge. We have crypto projects we work with that when they translate their materials, their blog posts, their websites and stuff in Chinese, exponential growth uh, across mm -hmm. the board. You're looking at the Spanish markets, which is an emerging crypto market, Portuguese market. You're looking at the Russian market. We have workers doing all of this stuff and we have an easy pipeline for you to just drop your files into our network. We will deliver the perfectly translated um, results to you. And we also format it with our microtasking uh, community as well. So any kind of format that you have, we can do it subtitles on your videos on your YouTube videos, we can also do it. So translating this stuff is uh, creating a, a lot of value to our projects, uh, and, and our, our clients. But um, yeah, we're getting really into the crypto space on that. We work with like Linus tech tips, we we, we do all his subtitles on YouTube, mm -hmm. his community has grown from 9 million to 13 million in just the last few months because of translations on YouTube. So now we want to offer that to our favorite space. So if you're a crypto project, a blockchain project um, that that's thinking about translations, contact us. We're your guys. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Chris. I will leave the links to the Effect AI platform in the description box below for all those community members that are looking to get involved. All the best moving forward with the project and let's follow up in the near future. Ashton, thanks so much for having me, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.